Uh, so my name is Matt Jackson. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio. And uh, I'm the first author on this project uh, that we did this past year called The Effect of Serum Testosterone on Treatment Outcomes in Patients with Intermediate to High Grade Prostate Cancer. And uh, I've been interested in prostate cancer for a long time uh, of all types and all treatment modalities. And one question that I really kind of wanted to focus in on for this project was that of uh, serum testosterone uh, as it relates to outcomes after radical prostatectomy. And the reason for that was that, um, at least when I was, as a medical student, trying to sort out uh, the data on prostate cancer and how testosterone matters uh, with those patients, um, there was kind of almost seemed like conflicting type of data out there in the literature, and there really is. So um, we have some studies that tell us that low serum testosterone um, is, you know, is a portends a worse outcome in these patients. But at the same time, uh, there's so much focus on lowering testosterone levels in gentlemen with prostate cancer and intentionally causing them to to be low. And as a medical student, even on my urology rotations, uh, I was told the one thing you always want to do before you start a, an elderly gentleman on a top testosterone injections is to check his PSA, do a DRE, make sure he doesn't have prostate cancer because we can make it worse if we gave him uh, supplemental testosterone. And so um, we looked at 468 patients that were treated at the Veterans Administration Hospital there in San Antonio, and all of them had post-radical prostatectomy testosterone levels taken. These were all open uh, radical retropubic prostatectomies, and uh, they all had post-op testosterone levels taken before any other type of therapy was administered. And basically, we separated those patients uh, by those testosterone levels. And so we separated them into five groups, the less than 10th percentile, 10 to 25, 25 to 50, 50 to 75, and 75, or at 75 to 90, and 90 and up. So in those five groups, we kind of look at outcomes um, and how they differed amongst the five groups. And really, the one thing I guess I'd like you to take away from my poster uh, is that of results um, related to five-year biochemistry failure-free survival. In that group, the, the gentleman with the lowest testosterone, so uh, less than the 10th percentile in our cohort, uh, did significantly worse than all of the other patients in our cohort. So uh, their five-year biochemical failure-free survival was 43.1%. Everybody else, 10% on up, uh, was all in the 60s. And so that's kind of, it was kind of the interesting tidbit that we, we took away from that. And I I, I was surprised at first by that result, and I honestly expected quite the opposite, uh, just being a naive medical student, taking kind of my first baby steps into this field, and then I thought, hey, wait a second, I thought high testosterone would really inflame prostate cancer in these gentlemen and uh, you know make their disease much worse. But I think it's probably um, that these gentlemen almost in a sense had a castrate-resistant type of prostate cancer that was um, kind of behaving so, it, it was so anaplastic that uh, it it, it kind of grew uh, and you know, created worse outcomes regardless of uh, our attempts to manipulate that with hormonal therapy or subsequent therapies. Uh, and I would kind of liken that to HPV cancers and head and neck in that we know patients with HPV positive head and neck cancer actually do better uh, than those that have head and neck cancers that arise kind of de novo. And the reason for that I think is thought that um, those that arrive de novo without the influence of HPV um, are at a cellular level so anaplastic that it just portends a much worse outcome for those patients. The cellular machinery is just at a basic level, um, just outside of our ability to really intervene, I guess you could say. Um, so really that uh, was our interesting tip, but I think some uh, critics might also say that those gentlemen that did the worst obviously have uh, a bad prostate cancer, have probably been sick for a while um, because they had low testosterone, probably also had a low PSA. and. Uh, they probably escaped detection for a long time, and so because of that, they're, they've been chronically ill for quite some time, and we know that chronically ill men, no matter what disease they have, cancer, diabetes, you name it, tend to have lower testosterone. So that's certainly a reasonable explanation. It could be contributing to our results as well, but next step for us is really to correlate these results, I think, first of all, to pre-treatment PSA as we write the manuscript and submit it. And hopefully the reviewers have some positive uh, feedback and criticisms that we can uh, make some changes and, uh, See where it goes from there.